This video was made for the first time user. It assumes you have unboxed your laser, assembled it if necessary, downloaded and installed Lightburn and are ready to make your first project. This video will be in several parts. I am not listing timestamps on purpose. All of the information in this video was created to ensure you can complete this project start to finish. There are several settings discussed that are necessary for the newbie. All of the things I talk about, including other videos, will be linked down below in the description. Sit back and get ready to make something wonderful. So you've never used a laser before. You just got it. You're excited. You've unpacked it. You've followed the instructions and put it together if it needed putting together. You've got it, everything plugged up and you're ready to use it and you're saying, well, you know, I've gone through a hundred different videos and I haven't found anyone that has showed me how to, <laughs> I've learned everything I can learn about Lightburn, but nobody showed me how to actually run my first project. So today we're going to do a beginner's project start to finish. I'm going to cover a few of the basics in Lightburn after getting your laser put together and plugged up. And then we're going to jump into a project which I will give you for free. <laughs> the, the download will be directly below the video so that you can follow along. So right now go down to the more section dot 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 more. <laughs> Click on that. Download the file extract the package and follow along with me and let's do your very first project we're going to do it in two different ways today so that i can show you how to get it done regardless of what laser you're using let's get your first project started right now let's jump up to lightburn so we are in lightburn and uh, you may not even see this so I'll turn that off and this may be what you see on your screen. This part, I don't know, it could be anywhere. Uh, I don't have a fresh version of Lightburn to show you with, but you'll have a laser tab and let me close some of these to get it looking a little bit more like what you might see. And you may see something like this where you have a window that says either laser or cuts and layers or move or console something like that and uh, you will have below an empty library there won't be anything in here so let's just get started on your fir very first project and let's cover the basics in Lightburn so you've got your Lightburn open I am using as of today's date which is Valentine's Day 2024 I am running the Lightburn version 1.5.01. .01. So if you have a different version than this, I would suggest that you pause the video right now. Either press the space bar if you're on a computer or tap the screen if you're on a cell phone or a mobile device and go ahead and click on help at the top of the screen and check for updates right here and make sure that you have the most current version. Now that you've done that, over here you're going to see these two icons are going to be your settings for Lightburn. We're going to start with the wrench and screwdriver icon and click on that and just verify our settings. So now if you take out your owner's manual, usually toward the very back, you're going to see something that tells you the size of your laser, which is the working size right here. And I am, ha I am using a right now 410 millimeter wide by 390 millimeter high laser now you may see something different this right here is millimeters to inches so if you're set in inches when you click on this you might see inches over here i highly recommend that you switch this to millimeters because that's what the manufacturer will be listing so uh, I'm, I've verified this, these two numbers. The origin 
on my machine is the bottom left. This is extreme. These right here are extremely important. If you set the wrong origin, if I put this up here, <laughs> none of my files are going to work properly. Or if I put it over here or down here. So most diode lasers are going to be the bottom left. Some diode lasers out of the norm are going to be the top left, like the X-Tool and NAJ, for instance. And most CO2s are going to be either the top left or the top right, with the top right being the most common. I am using a diode laser today, so and I know that my origin is the bottom left. This will be in your owner's manual. Checking some of the other settings, if you have limit switches, and most modern lasers do, you want to make sure that your auto home on startup is on, and your fast white space scan is set, so you can check with the manufacturer to find out the speed of your laser, and if you have two different speeds, you want to pick the slowest one, and pick a number in there. Uh, right now I've got one, my laser is, uh, I think it's 30,000 millimeters a minute, so I put in 15,000. That's good. Everything else in here should be uh, checked by default. You want to make sure an enable laser fire button is on if you want to see the laser while you're framing. And laser on when framing. I like to keep this at about 0.75% although you can set it to whatever you want whatever you want most people like anywhere from one to two percent I'm gonna keep it on 0.75 percent you definitely want to have the enable out-of-bounds warning because when you do a preview it will tell you if something is out of bounds so that has to be on the return to finish position is an option I like to have the laser move to the top right corner of the the machine when it's finished running the job so I have mine set on the X which is left to right at 400 millimeters and I have it set on the Y which is up and down at 385 and that will move it to the back right corner on almost all laser diode lasers you want to have your S value max set to 1000 and the baud rate, that is something you'd have to look at in your owner's manual. You should be okay with uh, 250,000 buffered. And additional settings over here with your laser machine on, you want to click this button that says read from controller right here. And that will automatically fill out all of these numbers for you. And basically what this is going to do is when you do a preview, it will give you an estimated time based on your controller's settings for the job. And that is about it for the wrench and screwdriver. Now if we go to the gear icon, you definitely never want to have beginner mode on because you'll lose a bunch of features in there. So uh, most of this should be okay for most users in the default settings. If, for instance, your two toolbar icons, all of these icons across the top and down the side are too small, you can make them larger. If they're too large, you can make them smaller. So whatever it is that you feel most comfortable with, and then you've got your font size over here, you can make your fonts larger or smaller. You don't get a preview on this till you let go of the mouse. There you go. Now you can see that I'm down it to 10 and there we go up to 12 and these are all the texts here in the font. My preferred number is 14. If you're using a diode laser you want to be on this side of the separator either millimeters per minute, inches per minute, uh, whatever it is that you want here. The most common and most used is millimeters per minute and that is the standard for diode lasers. If you have a CO2 or a Galvo laser, you want to be on the left side of the separator here. And the most common number is millimeters per second. You want to have snap to objects and snap to grid on. And here is the movement. So when you select an item, how far should it move when you use your arrow keys? Once you select the item, you can use your arrow keys to move it around and I like to have with lots of control, which means holding the control key and pressing an arrow key, it will move one millimeter. 
I like to have using just the arrow keys for it to move five millimeters. I like to have using shift and the arrow key, I like to have it move 20 millimeters. And that's pretty much everything that you need to set on here. In the file settings, the only thing that you need to be concerned with in here is going to be your SVG import settings. Most files that you're going to buy online, if they're in an SVG format, are going to be created in Illustrator at 72 DPI. The default for Lightburn is going to be 96 DPI for Inkscape default. I keep it at 72 DPI because I know that some of the files that I'm going to use from my patrons that have problems with it are going to mostly be done in Illustrator. If you have this set at the default 96 DPI and you bring in a file that was created in Illustrator, it will be larger. Either one doesn't make a difference. I keep it at 72 DPI. On your file settings, that's about everything that you're going to need to know. Some of these other things are more advanced. We're not going to get into that today. So we can say OK to that. The only other thing that you need to know right now is all of these icons at, at the top are not going to be here when you first start Lightburn. So what I've done here is I've got a range long. You're going to get it with a range. And let me move some of these out of the way so you can see it better. Where you see these vertical dots, anywhere that you see vertical dots, you'll see it turn into four arrows, or I should say two arrows, anywhere that you see vertical dots. So what that means is that you can grab it and you can move it wherever it is that you like. I can even drag it down here and put it in its own layer. If I just move this one down here so that you can see it better, if I come in here and I take off the arranged long, well, that's all you're going to see is these right here. So I like to have all of the extra advanced arranged long features. So I will turn off arrange. See how that disappeared? And I will turn on, I'm just right clicking on this white space right here. So white, right click is the shortcut menu in most functions in Lightburn. So I'm going to turn on arrange long now and you'll see that I have a lot more icons in here for positioning and so forth. So I want that arrange long. I'll now put it back up there and uh, I can show you one more time because that may have been confusing. I'll turn off arrange long and I'll turn on arrange which is the default setting that it comes with and you'll see that it's missing all of these icons over here. So let me turn that back off and put arrange long back on. And these are really important to have here. And so are these. So um, you definitely want to have arrange long. I'm going to go ahead and move this back up here to get it out of my way. And that is for your uh, roller accessory, which we're not going to discuss today. Everything on the screen here has a pop-up menu. So if you pass your mouse over it, you'll get a description. Doesn't matter what it is, as you see. And if you still need more information, then you can pass your mouse over an icon. You'll see how it turns blue. And you can press the F1 key. And that F1 key will give you more information on some icons like this one over here for instance if I pass my mouse over it and it did not turn blue if I press F1 it will open an actual window at Lightburn and give you a complete description of that function no turning blue it will it will open the help page on Lightburn software turning blue will open a local uh, copy of help and then down here you've got all of your selectors so if you wanted to for instance draw a square or a rectangle you would cl click on the primitive shape there and click and hold and if you wanted it to be a perfect square then you would hold shift and that would make it a perfect square as you drag if you wanted a rectangle you wouldn't hold shift and the same applies for any of the primitive shapes over here. 
If I click and hold, if I hold shift, it's a perfect circle. If I don't hold shift, it's not. All of these work the very same way. Hold shift, let go of shift, hold shift. <laughs> they all work the same way. So we've got three separate things here. Next is the node editing. Uh, we're not going to get into that today. You can search node on my channel if you want to see it. The next one is text, which does exactly was it what it says. Just like a word processor, you just type out your letters like that. And then you come up to here, up at the top here where it says font. You go ahead and pick a font that you like. You can make it bold. You can make it italic. You can make it all uppercase. You can distort it. You can make it welded. You can change the space in between the letters. So you horizontal space. You can change the vertical space. There's so much more, so many uh, different things here that you will learn in my Lightburn College course. So there I have a playlist called Lightburn College Get Your Degree. I highly recommend that you watch all of that to get an idea of all of this. We're almost done here, so <laughs> stick around. Uh, library. Libraries are cut and engraved settings. You can search my channel for the word library and that will show you how to get them and how to use them. And then if I right click on the title bar here, you'll see I have a bunch of choices that I can put check marks in. Any title bar, doesn't matter which one you, you choose. I'm going to choose over here, Art Library, right here. And that just popped up a new tab down here called Art Library. In my Art Library, I have the file that we're going to do today. Now you can learn again how to create these on your own by searching my channel for library. But today let's talk about how do you bring your first job in. Once you've purchased a file, if you decide to purchase files, you would click over here on import. This is import, this is open. So if you're purchasing files, they're likely gonna come in the form of an SVG. So we're going to click on import. It'll be an SVG or an AI or whatever the case might be. Here is an SVG. We can import that into our workbed here. And you see we've got this file ready to run. Now, if we do the open icon over here, and also here's the file menu. It's also over here. So you can do file open over here, or you can do file import from over here. We're going to do it from the little folder because that's how I've been doing it for 40 years. <laughs> so we're going to click the folder and you'll see that that SVG file is now gone. And the reason for that is because I'm using the Lightburn file. If you have a Lightburn file, it will end in the letters .lbrn for Lightburn 2. So it will be either .lbrn, which would be a legacy file that's on files that were created two years ago or more on lower versions of Lightburn, or it will be .lbrn2. We're going to pick this one right here and say open. And there is our file. This is the file that I'm sharing with you today. So um, let's get started with this and let's talk about how do I actually get this onto a piece of wood? Well, on here, I say paint this red before lasering. And that refers to this one above it here. This piece is going to go on top of this piece. So on this one, it says suggested color is white. So you're going to paint two pieces of wood, one red, one white, before we actually go to the laser. If we look at the cuts and layers here, you'll notice that um, I have all of these words in here and stuff. These are all toolpaths. So what a toolpath is, it means that it has no speed, no power, and will not output to the laser. It's just a, basically a tool that you can use, that you can write notes, you can do whatever you want. And the way most people use a toolpath is they create something like this right here. 
So they know that all of this white space inside of this blue heart, which you'll see is red up here, is safe to engrave in because this one's going to go on top. So that's pretty much how most people use the toolpath. I put words and things like that in it. Now, if, for instance, you wanted to select all of that and get rid of it, I'll show you a shortcut. If you hold down the shift key and then click on it right up here where it says cuts and layers, it will select everything that's on that layer. And you can drag all of this off. And if you made a mistake, you can press control and the letter Z to send it back. Or you can always use the redo undo buttons up here at the top. Now, would you want to do that? Not really. <laughs> For the purpose of this demonstration, these are, don't affect us at all. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove these because it says graphics go here. So we're going to put some graphics there. Other than that, we don't have to do anything else. Now, if, for instance, you're doing your own files and you wanted to make sure that this and this are not going to move, well, what you can do is select both of these, right-click on them. Right-click is the shortcut for almost everything in Lightburn. And you can come down here and say Lock Selected Shapes. And once you do that, you'll see these little crosses here, one on each corner, which means that you won't be able to move this at all or damage it in any way. We're not going to do that today, so we're just going to unlock this. Just wanted to point that out to you. Now, another thing is if you drag from right to left, you'll see that it's green. Well, it will select everything that it touches in any direction, as you see. I was touching the red and I was touching the blue. If I drag from left to right, it will only, you'll see it's in red, will only select everything that is 100% within that square or rectangle in this case. So if I let go of this, it will only select that heart right there. But if I come at it from this direction, it will select everything. So that's another tip there. So let's get started with this project being that we know most of what's going on. If you happen to zoom out too far, I'm using my mouse wheel to zoom in and out on the workbed. But if you're zoomed out too far, you could always hit this project up here, uh, zoom to project, and that will bring you right back in again. This is your preview button up here. When you click on preview, it will show you I shouldn't have that inverted. It will show you everything that the laser is going to cut. The green is the outer bounds of your work area, your laser's work area. The red cross is the origin of your laser. So this is where the laser would start. If you turn on this button that says show traversal moves, it will show you how the laser is going to work. And then if you grab this timeline and scrub it back it will actually show you how the laser will work if i hit play you'll see that it's going to show you everything involved in creating this design and how your laser is going to run the job now one thing that's noteworthy on your preview and this is very important if we were to take a circle and let's go ahead and draw out a circle down here on the bottom are all of your layers. You have uh, 29 layers that you can put an item on, or 29 colors, and then you have two tool, tool paths that we already discussed. Now, if we put this on layer three as an example, and we've got that in fill mode. So the reason why we would use different layers is because we might want one layer to burn darker than another layer. Uh, we want one layer to cut, we want one layer to engrave, and so forth. Now this is in filled mode. Now you may not see this because the default for light burn is going to be like this, and you'd have to look up here to see if it's in fill. But if you wanted to see it preview on screen, you could go to filled course if you have a powerful enough computer or filled smooth which takes even more re resources so we're going to say filled course so that you can see what i'm doing here now this job will not run 
it absolutely will not run and by clicking the preview window you'll find out why we have show traversal moves on and do you see what the problem is with this light burn uh, diode lasers now uh, diode lasers and co2 lasers actually um, you don't have the actual over scanning feature in the co2s because it's built into your controller but on diode lasers you will see that this job will work just fine until it gets to right there when it hits right here you'll be hitting the boundary of your lasers work area because this is the scan area where you see in black and the red is the over scan area so it will travel at the speed that you set right here I have it at 17,500 millimeters per minute and it will travel at that speed between here and here then it will keep going and it will ramp down and get ready to turn around and then it will turn around and then it will ramp back up again the speed and start right there and keep going across and the same thing for the other side so what happens here it's gone further than the boundary of your laser and you will get the dreaded error 9 and the laser will stop the job and you'll start scratching your head as to why <laughs> So you always want to be careful of those outer boundaries and you always want to do a preview. If we move it to there, you'll see that it's perfect. It will not cross that outer boundary of the edge of your laser and you will be able to run this job. So that was just a, a point that I wanted to throw in there. Now let's get started on this job. Let's go ahead and put what we want here inside this heart. Graphics go here. I pulled that out of there. I'm going to grab some text. Uh, I'm just going to do I, enter, love, enter, you. That's good enough for me for this demonstration. So whatever layer you used last is the layer that it will put this on. Try and get a handle on your layers here. I like to use the black layer for engraving. And I like to use the red layer for cutting it's just normal that I would expect that red would cut so I use the black and the blue for engraving and then I have all different other things uh, on every one of these layers so I'm not going to get into that because some layers are for the fiber some la layers are for the co2 but you can create all of your own settings for all different types of projects in these different layers here now I don't like the fact that they're so far apart so I'm going to come up here to the vertical spacing, V space, and I'm going to hit the down arrow and make the V space a little less like that. Now I'm also going to go bold and maybe I'll go ital italic. No, I don't like that. I'm going to stick to that right there. So I'm going to take this whole group right here by grabbing the center handle. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, a bunch of handles on here. <laughs> I'm just going to take the center handle and I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to snap it somewhere in the middle right there and it just snapped right there in the middle. Now I'm going to grab any one of these corner handles and what I'm going to do is hold down control and slowly bring this down so it scales proportionately from the middle. If I were to do it a different way, if I were to do it this way, you'll see it will scale to the bottom left corner. If I were to do it this way, now you get the idea. So I'm going to do it by holding control, scale it proportionately like that. And that's all I need to do for this file. So now I've got one layer that engraves and I've got one layer that cuts out and anything that's blue is completely ignored. What's important is to come over to the laser tab and over here you'll see optimization settings. Now remember that this is your very first time. So you're going to need to click on optimization settings and you want to have order by layer, order by group, order by priority. You want to make sure that cut inner shapes first is turned on, reduce travel moves is on, choose the best starting point and choose the best direction. And that's all you need. And now you can click 
set this as your defaults and OK. Now, if we come over here, the priority over here is whatever is at the top will be first, whatever comes next will be second, whatever comes third will be third, and so on all the way down the list if you have 10 different layers here. We don't want this to cut first. We want this to engrave first. So I'm going to grab this engrave layer, click, hold, drag up to the top, or you can use the up and down arrows over here. As long as you have something highlighted, you can go up or down with it. I want my engrave layer to run first, my cut layer to run second. And the reason for that is if the, if the cut layer happens to drop down, then the engrave will be in the wrong spot. The tool layer you never have to worry about because it does not output speed, power, anything. You don't have to worry about that. If you didn't want to show something while you're working, you could always turn off by clicking the show button over here and that will make it go away temporarily. Or you can turn it back on. Just like if you wanted to turn off the black layer while you're designing something on the red or the red layer, you can show on this side. Your air assist, if you have automatic air assist that's controlled by light burn, you want to have that turned on. I like to use air assist on both engraving and cutting and you'll see why later in the video. That is everything that we've got here. Now hopefully you've gone ahead and painted one piece of wood red and another piece of wood white. So let's jump over into the laser lab and let's go grab our two pieces of wood and run this job and see what we get. All right, so um, it is about 35 minutes later. I am out in the laser lab and I have grabbed two pieces of wood and I've ran next door. I spray painted one red, I spray painted the other white. And these are the results that I've gotten. And you're probably wondering, if it's 35 minutes later, how did he do that? Um, the quick answer to that is I spray paint them and then I use a heat gun on them. So about a minute after I spray paint them, they're dry. Now, occasionally I will get some bubbles because I'll be in a rush and I do it too quickly. So the moisture in the wood comes up and bubbles. This one I got bubbles on. Once it's dry, all you have to do is take your hand and rub those bubbles right out. So they come right out, as you can see here. I did get some bubbles on this one, but it turned out perfect. So uh, that's it. And actually right here, right there, you can probably see where a couple of those bubbles were indented a little bit. Not perfect, you know, <laughs> if you have the time to paint them the day before or something like that that's fine uh, the only thing is that you do want to let the wood after it's painted and dried you do want to let it acclimate to the room temperature where you're going to be laser engraving it so we're all set with the wood i've got both pieces of wood ready uh, to put on the laser and let's jump over into light burn and uh, find out over there what we have to do next so here we go in Lightburn, you'll see that I am disconnected. So I'm going to reach over now and turn on the laser that is behind me right here, which is the Lasermatic, and we're going to see what happens in Lightburn. Now I've just turned that on, and as you can see, it is not homing. So I will show you the reason for that because this is going to be a problem that some of you may have. You'll see that it still says disconnected. So there are two things that I can do here. I can either right click this devices button or the more likely the easier way to do this is pull this down and choose the right COM port. Now I'm going to click on this COM port and watch what happens when I do that. I'm going to switch back to the laser now. And there we go. And you see that the laser has now homed. And if we come back to Lightburn, you can see up here, it now says ready. Okay, so that would be one of the most common 
uh, problems that a user would have is not having the right COM port selected. You can always right click on this devices button and that will also do the same thing. It'll search for a COM port. So let's go ahead and bring that file in. So if I do file open, uh, it's on the network in the drive where I saved it. And here is the file right here to layer uh, heart and I'm going to say open and there we go we have the same exact file that we had before so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to check the measurements on this and the measurements are uh, let's see up in the top here 11.5 inches wide that's good that'll fit on my 12.12 .12 and 3.2 inches high for each one so I'm going to put this back into millimeters and I'm going to take this off so this one is going to come off and I didn't uh, save that file so it still says graphics go here. I'm going to take this off the work area. So once it's over here in that white space, the laser no longer sees it. If I come up here to the preview window, preview, there we go. So now you will see that that is where it will cut on the workspace. Now this is my entire workspace, remember? The green line, that's my origin over there. This is where it's going to cut. I want this to cut in the top left corner. This one is going to be the red layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, select the whole thing, come up to the top here, right up here, move it to the top left corner, and then to be safe, I'm, just to be safe, I'm going to move it down with the arrow key. If you remember, the arrow key moves it five millimeters and move it over one. So I, I went down one and I went over one. Now I can be sure if I look at my preview that I'm outside the boundary of the laser even though I was in the top left corner. So now to be really safe I can actually draw a frame here the size of my wood and if I put that on the T2 layer like that come up here and unlock it come into inches I know that my wood is uh, 12, tab 12, enter, 12 by 12, and put that in the top corner. And then I will move that off. Uh, actually, I'm going to leave that there because that's where the wood is. I'm sorry. So that is where my wood is going to be. It's going to be in that top corner. I'll show you a different way to do this in a few moments, but this machine that I'm using is very precise. So I know that if my wood is positioned in this top left corner and this toolpath represents that wood, that this item will cut out well inside the boundaries of that wood. With that done now, I'm going to go over to the laser and I'm going to place my wood. Now the next thing I have to do is I have to focus the laser. So we're going to come back to Lightburn once again. I'm going to click on this map icon right over here. And this map icon is positioning the laser absolutely. Now I am in, as you see over here, absolute coordinates. So everything I do on here, the laser is going to rec recognize based on this grid. So I'm going to click on the map icon. I'm going to click right here and the laser will move to that position as you see and now I can focus my laser so now with the laser focused back in here into Lightburn. The laser is now focused and I can start this job once I set my cuts and layers. So on my cuts and layers, this looks about right, uh, or at least for this demonstration. Uh, you'll, you will have to uh, figure out what your settings are. And if you search my channel for the word library, 
it will show you how to get one of these uh, libraries this is the art library this is the cut library over here and it will show you how to get one of these cut libraries for yourself for your particular power laser so I'm just gonna leave it at that I'm gonna let it burn a little bit hot and I know that this is positioned perfectly because I'm in absolute coordinates over here and this is a precision laser so this is the work bed the laser will not go off this work bed. It's not like some of the lower quality units where when you put the honeycomb down, it's not in any absolute position. This one happens to be. So we're going to run this in absolute coordinates just like this. I'm going to check my cuts and layers, make sure that my air assist is on, which it's not. So I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to come back over here to the laser and I'm going to hit start and we're going to switch back over to the uh, laser matic. There you see it's turned on the air assist and it is now cutting out the first tart. So it's important when you do something like this um, that you have good smoke extraction and this is venting to the outdoors there is absolutely no smell in this shop whatsoever with this uh, outdoor vent on. Uh, the fan that comes with the Lasermatic is about 170 CFMs. I have this hooked up to a 220 CFM inline fan and uh, that is plenty enough. It's like a booster to get all of that smoke out without any of it coming into the shop. So now, while that job is running, we're going to go back to Lightburn. And I'm going to just going to go ahead and drag these off to the white space. Because we've already done that. Then we're going to grab these and we're going to put these up in the top left corner like that. I'm going to do one arrow down, one arrow over like I did before. And then I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to get rid of this graphics go here. And I'm going to do this once again because I didn't save the file. So I'm just going to do um, I, I love you. That's perfect. And I'm going to select that now. Put that on the black layer. Like that. I'm going to come over here to my cuts and layers. I'm going to put the black layer into fill. And I'm going to move this until it snaps into the middle. There, did you see that snap right there? That snapped in the middle. But what I want to do is change that font. So I think I will do a, well, I'll just pick anything in here. That looks good. I'm going to change my vertical spacing to bring it in closer together like that. And then I'm going to hold control and drag out a corner. And I think that looks pretty good. Now holding control, I'm just going to move it down a little bit. And there we go. So that looks pretty good like that. And I'm pretty sure that this setting is uh, pretty close. So I'm just going to change this to 15 to 50 and 95% power. I think that should work fine. And here is the overscanning that I was talking to you about earlier. And you can see that the overscanning on this layer is set at 4%. So we are finished now with the first layer. So I'll go get that off the laser and put the white layer on. By the way, folks, what you're seeing here is a one take video. So um, you're seeing this actually live. And here is my first or my, my top layer, which is the red. So this is all set, ready to go. 
I'll put this one off on the side and if we come back over to the laser you'll see that the white is there and you also see that the laser moved all the way to the top right corner like I showed you earlier okay so we are gonna come back to Lightburn and here we're gonna do the same thing our red layer is gonna stay the same our black layer is going to engrave but the mistake that I have here is that the black layer is below the red so I have to move the black layer to the top like that black first red second and now I'm ready to run this job so what what's gonna happen here let me show you the preview before it cuts it out it's gonna come in and do the engraving and then it's gonna come back around and cut it out and that preview looks perfect so I can just come to the laser tab now and hit the start button and you'll see that the laser has started that job So this is not going to take very long. I hope you don't mind that I'm not going to speed any of this up because I want you to see all of this live. And the next one that we're going to do is we're going to do a different uh, start from position. We're going to use current position on the next one. And the reason for that is because on some lasers you'll never know exactly uh, absolute coordinates without burning a grid into a wasteboard so and then once you do that you really can't cut because if you cut through the material it'll cut through the wasteboard grid as well so I'm gonna show you if you have a honeycomb how you can do it from any position but in the meanwhile it's gonna finish this engraving and then we'll talk about the way the reason that I can engrave over a painted surface without any issues whatsoever and I'll show you that in just a moment so it is just about finished with that engraving and it's going to come back now and cut out that heart I hope all of this is making sense to you I'm trying to cover it in a clear enough way so um, that anybody can follow this video on their cell phone or their tablet while they're actually doing it on their computer so now that we've got the two of these done going back to Lightburn we've got both of these done and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just move this one now I'm gonna leave this one here because this will be, I forgot, this is the next one that we're going to do in user uh, current position. So over here on the laser tab, I'm going to change this from absolute coordinates to current position. And we can work any way that we want. We can do anything that we want on here while this job is running. So I've changed it to current position. And I'm just going to leave this where it is because it doesn't matter where we put this now. Uh, actually I can put it anywhere doesn't matter where we put it because we're going to be working in current position so let's go back and take a look at the laser real quick while it's finishing up this job I just wanted to show you that in between and it's almost finished now and I'm gonna show you the trick on this so let me get this off of the laser and I'll show you the trick to engraving a painted surface alright so here we go this is the second layer now it's engraved I'm just going to take a paintbrush, a, a stiff paintbrush, and I'm just going to whisk it like this with the grain. And keep, keep in mind that you should be doing both of these either with the grain or against the grain. Both of them should be the same so that the look comes out good. And then I'm going to just go side to side like that. And you'll see that all of the soot and the debris is now gone.
I love you looks perfect. And if we take our two arrows and put one over the other, we've just done this complete job live. Doesn't that look nice? Great little project, great little beginner project for that anybody can do. Once you glue these two together, it's going to be a fantastic first project for you. So now that we've done that, let's do something different. Let's talk about current position. Let's go back to light burn. So now I've changed to current position and I've put this dot in the center. I always work from the center. So if you put it up here in the top right, uh, top left corner, it's going to frame down from that corner. But I like to frame from the middle. So I will take this over here. It doesn't matter where it goes. Like I said, I can put it anywhere I want. Let's put it way down here. Now let's go back over to the laser. Put this wood back in place. And now we are in current position and that means wherever the laser currently is so I will take and move the laser by hand now very slowly Alright, so there you can see I am a little bit close to the right edge, so I'm just going to move it slightly by hand. Just a little bit. I'm going to hit frame again. I think I'm still a little bit too... Too close so as you can see now uh, doesn't matter let me go back to um, light burn real quick so you can see this here we are back in light burn so now even if I take this and move it now because we are in current position it doesn't make a difference where I move it so going back to the laser I'm gonna hit frame one more time And that looks perfect. And now I can uh, come back to light burn and hit the start button on this one. So now I'm going back into uh, light burn and what I forgot to tell you here was um, you do need to get rid of these tool paths or you can go to cuts and layers and turn off the framing on it. Uh, so what I do is I usually just delete these two and you don't have to save this file so it doesn't matter. So now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to move it off to the side here. And I'm going to take this one and I'm going to bring it over onto the work area. And like I said, it doesn't matter where. We'll put it back up where it was earlier, up there on the top. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of this. And I'm just going to leave that piece right there because we're in current position in the center here. And we could also uh, pick any one of the corners if we wanted to. You'll, you can learn this part on your own. But we're going to run this job next, as soon as this one finishes. But now at least we're prepared for it. So now if you don't have, if you're not fortunate enough to have a lasermatic, um, you know, that has precise positioning, or if you're not using a camera to position your work, um, then you can use this method here.
So we finished the engraving on this one and uh, we're now to the cut section. When this cut is finished I will go and position the other wood exactly as it was before. If you remember earlier we had it way up here. So I'm going to leave this in that position right there and we're going to actually cut it out from down here because we're in current position. We're using current position. Wherever the laser module is at the time, that is the current position and that is where it will start. So we're almost finished here and I'm getting ready to switch it out to the red layer. So now if I haven't moved anything, then I can come back over to Lightburn and I, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> if I hit frame, it should frame out perfectly right where it is. And as you can see, that's a perfect frame. If we come back to Lightburn, you can see that it is up in the top corner so it doesn't matter where in the world I put this it's still going to frame properly because of this position over here so we're ready just to run this job I'm just going to hit start So now I think I've uh, pretty much made my point as to you can do it in two different methods. And if we come back over to me here, <laughs> I've got my second one ready. I'm going to do the very same thing I did with the first one. There, there are actually two methods to doing this. So if, for instance, your paintbrush doesn't take off all of the soot and debris, this one did, but let's say that yours didn't you still have some soot and debris you don't have the right settings well <clears throat> in this case there is a second method for doing this you can take your piece and take a bottle of just plain spray water go over a garbage pail give it a couple of shots of water just like that shake it off and wipe it dry and all of your soot and debris will be gone and it doesn't affect the engraving see how perfect that is so there is our layer one layer two is still cutting out on the laser it should be ready in a moment and once that is ready we can put these two together i'm going to wipe off a little more of that water that i put on there just now the one of the benefits that you get to doing it this way is you get a nice um, a nice brown out of the engraving so you actually wash off all of the soot and debris some people like the black uh, I like the brown so I usually do wind up spraying it with water to get the soot out of there it just depends on some projects I want it to be black and other projects I want it to be brown and uh, that's you know it's just a matter of which do you prefer?
and we're getting down to the final moments here on this one using current position and like I said earlier you can design anywhere on Lightburn's workbed and uh, move the laser head by hand to the home to the position that you need And let me turn off some of this here. Make it a little quieter for me in here. Uh, I don't know if you guys can hear all that noise, but I certainly can. All right, so here is project number two. Exactly the same as project number one. There you go. I love you. Arrow. Project number two. I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> I need three hands to actually do this to line these up but there you go project number one project number two one is in absolute coordinates and the other one is in uh, user origin so there are the two methods for making this project it is a cool little project I happen to like it um, my wife loved it the first time I gave it to her <laughs> My uh, granddaughter loved it when I gave it to her. In fact, I am giving my granddaughter one uh, again tomorrow with a different saying on it. So, um, really cool project. Really easy to make. Today's video was start to finish with only a couple of little edits. Mostly it was live all the way through. There were a few times uh, I'm recovering from a throat infection. So, there were a few times where I cut it to cut out the coughs. But other than that... This is the whole project right here. And you saw just how easy and simple this is for a beginner to do. And to help you out, this file will be right below the video if you click on the little dot, 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 more. <laughs> I don't know why they changed that from description. But click on more, show more, uh, dot, 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 more. And you'll see a link there to the two-layer heart a zip package that you can download. Hopefully you've already done that and you followed along with the steps in this video. So anyway, I know it was a long video, but I wanted to cover all of the bases, including the settings, so that you wouldn't miss anything. You could follow along with me and get the same exact results that I did. Now the next step for this is to take it back out to the uh, shop next door and to glue this together first and then put a finish on it. And the finish that I prefer is Rust-Oleum Triple Thick Glaze. I'll put a link to that down in the description as well. It gives you a beautiful finish on your projects. You can get a mirror-like finish. It's so nice. Almost looks like plastic. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video today. I hope you learned something as a new person to laser engraving. To help you get started how do I get my first project done after I've got everything set up and I want to thank you for watching don't forget about watching my light burn college if you haven't done that it'll teach you how to master light burn and how to make some really terrific projects so as always thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one <laughs>